Right, we're going to add some RAM to our system today, and for that we're going to use this board, which is the FDC Plus. Uh, it's made by Mike Douglas, uh, it's $165. Um, obviously it isn't just a RAM card, uh, it's actually a drop-in replacement for the floppy disk drive controllers, which was a, originally a two-board set from uh, MITS. Um, you can see the uh, floppy drive connector at the top here. And it is even more clever than that, in fact, it, it, it can actually turn various uh, floppy disk drives into um, floppy disk drives that look just like Altair ones, which so you can run Altair images on you know a, a wide range of floppy drives. Um, in addition to that, if you uh, have a little look around the board, um, this is the 64K of RAM. Uh, there's an 8K ROM in there which might supply it with various um, Altair bootloaders and Altmon which is the um, Alt Altair monitor. Uh, this, this board I've uh, put the Phantom mod on it which is documented in uh, Mike's manual. All that does is that when Phantom is asserted it um, blocks reads from the RAM chip and we'll use that a little bit later on when we do our jump start from the, the other board. Uh, give it a little, little tour there we go, that's one end, that's the other end, and we'll flip it over as usual so you can see the back. There we go. Nicely made, obviously it comes complete and tested, all ready to go. Um, I mean clearly obviously this is, you know, for some people this might be an expensive option, um, so later in the series I will be making a, a static RAM card. Um, which will obviously be a lot cheaper. Um, for me though I wanted the uh, floppy disk controller so for me the $165 was well worth it. Um, what we need to do on this we need to configure uh, these three dip switches before we start. Uh, so we'll jump over to the PC and, uh, and we'll test it out. Right, let's have a look at the switch configuration. There's two switches. There's one for the RAM and one what is marked here as, as PROM or EPROM, however you, you want to put it really. Um, both switches are the same. If, if the switch is pressed down towards the top of the board, it's a 1. If it's pressed down towards the bottom of the board like this one, it's a 0. Uh, even though we're not using the, the PROM on this board, this is actually where the RAM starts. Um, so if we we'll have a look at this one first, um, seven and eight aren't used, so you can ignore those two. Um, number six is set to a zero. That's the prom enable, so effectively it's off. Um, the remaining switches are from A12 down to A8, uh, and I've set um, A12 and A11 to one and the rest are zero. Um, effectively that gives us a start address of F800 or that's where the RAM finishes. Um, it's a little bit odd because you can't see the rest of the um, address lines which will be a bit further up but if you work it out that's that's how it works. Uh, the RAM switches, uh, we're not using 8 on this one uh, so ignore switch 8. The first switch is number 7 that's set to uh, that's RAM not enable, so we've set that to a zero to enable the RAM. Uh, the next ones are A15 through down to A10. Uh, now what I've done, I've started the RAM where the ROM or reprom finishes on the serial board, um, so I've set A11 to a one, so effectively our RAM will start at 800 hex which will start just after the EEPROM which finishes at 7FF. Right, the final switch, we just scroll across. This one is the, this, the disk drive um, type. Um, we won't use that in this video, but we'll use it in a later one, so we'll set it now. Um, this is set to, it's only these top four that are used on this one, by the way. Uh, this is set to 0, 1, 1, 1 and that defines it as a serial drive um, as an Altair 8 inch. Right, so that'll do it for the switches. 
Right, this is the test program we're going to use. I'm just using the sort of classic um, alternating bit pattern of 55 hex and AA hex. So basically, all we're doing uh, we set the program up at zero. Uh, we stick 55 hex in A, and then we store it at a thousand hex, which effectively will blip A12, and then we reload it from a thousand hex, and then we do a compare to see if it really is 55 he um, hex. Um, if the result isn't zero, it'll go to fail. Um, if it is okay, then it'll blip A15. Uh, onto the next test, it then loads A with AA hex and again stores at 1000 hex, blipping A12, and then reloads from 1000 hex. And it does compare to AA hex, and again, if, it, if it's a zero, it's okay. If it's not a zero, then it's obviously gone wrong. Uh, and then it just jumps to delay here. Uh, if it's if it's successful, um, it will blip A14 by doing an STA at 4000 hex. Um, the, the end of the program, I've just padded out with some no ops. They're not really necessary, but it, it sort of um, may smooth out the <laughs> result on the Logic Pro. Uh, and then it just jumps back to the start, so it goes straight back to the beginning, uh, just to to verify the address lines. Let's just go to here. Um, this is our blip on A15 as we've seen before that's that end bit at 8000 and the blip on A14 um, is at 4000 hex but that's your A14 blip and your final blip on A12 is uh, 1000 hex that blips A12 right. right we're back at the bench then um, all ready to go. I'll put a new program in. I'm actually using the EEPROM this time, but obviously no real difference to an EEPROM. Um, all I need to do is put in the FDC card. We'll pop that in there. There we go. There we go. All right, just power it up. All right, program should be running now. Um, as you remember, we're writing to 1000 hex, which should be blipping A12. So there it goes. Oops, hang on. Let me just show you there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see that blipping away now. Right. Program. I'll just check the program is, at, is actually looping okay. So if we go to A5, that should be blipping away. And nothing should blip after that if it's in the loop. So if we go over here to. Let me just keep getting in the way. Right, that's A5. If I go over to A6, that should be low, which it is and also A7 is low which it is so we're getting our writes to 1000 hex that's fine All right. so all we've got to do now is, is, is uh, check our test lines where we were blipping so remember we were blipping on A15 and A14 so if I flip over to A15 ah absolutely nothing's happening you can see that's completely dark All right so that one's not working and uh, let's flip over to A14 and that one's low as well, so it, it's clearly not working. Um, right, what we'll do is we'll I'll just go back to the PC now, and I'll explain to you what's going on. Right, so this is our RAM chip. Uh, what we need to know now is why it's not working. Um, initially, I thought it was to do with timing. If you if you'd seen my um, previous video, uh, you'll you'll know that I had some serious timing problems with the clock, which I've corrected. Um, that didn't fix the issue with the RAM though. Um, so I thought, well, the only way I'm going to work it out is, is to work backwards from the RAM chip. Um, so if we look at the data sheet, right, this is the RAM chip that's been used in, on the FDC Plus. Um, <clears throat> all the address lines were fine, and all the data lines, um, as you'd expect, because obviously you know we were using the EEPROM on the uh, serial card, and that was fine, and uh, obviously our address buffers are fine, because otherwise we wouldn't be transferring data properly. Um, but when I looked a bit close, more closely, the the right enable here uh, was doing absolutely nothing. The output enable was doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so <laughs> clearly, it wasn't being accessed at all. Um, the chip enable was okay um, here. Uh, that was the one that was used from the decoding circuit. I think this one was just tied low. Uh, so something was obviously wrong. Uh, and it, it turns out that that Mike's circuit um, makes use of a um, a line on the S100 bus called memory write on pin 68 
and I, I tried I sort of traced that signal back through my system and uh, found it was just floating basically and I think well you know this is a bit odd <laughs> um, went back to the processor card and pin 68 isn't even connected and I thought well this is really getting really strange now and then it suddenly dawned on me that the, this signal was actually coming from the um, front panel board <laughs> Uh, which of course we haven't got in our system at all. Uh, if you look at the circuit here, there's our mystery memory write pulse on pin 68, and this is exactly where it's coming from. Um, so what we're going to have to do is to is to implement this circuit. Luckily, we don't need very much. Uh, we just need this little buffer I see here, uh, one uh, quad NAND gate, and if we scroll down here. Uh, we also need to put in this chip here, this U15 that produces the um, output signal. Uh, and there's one more line, go back up again, uh, this one here. This one goes to down here, down here. Now what we'll do, we'll just tie that line high through a resistor and that should get our circuit going. So what we'll do, I'll uh, sort this circuit out and then we'll go back to the bench and uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more luck this time. <laughs> right, here's our circuit as we uh, looked at just now. Uh, here's the three chips, there's one there, one there, one there, and there's the 1K pull-up resistor. Uh, obviously there's a power regulator on there. Um, unsurprisingly, this is the card we will use as part of our front panel circuit in a later video, so I won't go into it now, but let's get it in the system and let's see if it works. All right, let's get it over here. All right, oh, there we go. All right, all in there, move the camera over a bit. Right, let's power up and then uh, see if we have a bit more luck. Go. Right, let's just check we're getting our pulse on A2L first. Right, so that's getting the hand out of the way again. Right, that's going. Right, our first test should be on A15, which is that one. And look at that success. So it's actually that's actually running now. And our final test is on A14, which is this one here. Oop, hang on. There we go. You can see that, can't you? Yeah, that's it. Right, so it's all working. Uh, that's great news. Um, one thing I should point out just before I go, uh, this board has got a bit of sting in the tail. Um, when I put it in originally, it didn't actually work yet again. Um, <laughs> down here, and there's a little link which <laughs> breaks that um, signal that we've been trying to find all this time. So that's one to remember. Right, so I shall uh, see you next time.